Hey, what's up? I'm Brett with Premier Guitar Rock on the NAMM Show with Mr. Scary himself, George Lynch. What's up, dude? Hey, I should probably play that song she just announced that I'm Mr. Scary, right? Okay, ready to go. All right, let's get it. I can play the first part for free, the rest I'm going to charge you for. Yep. Uh, as long as there's the hooker headstock, I'm in. That's my headstock, what do you think? Yeah, uh, I, I actually did rip it off from someone else. But brother, I got to tell you, these are some seriously badass guitars. And, you know, for people who don't know about Mr. Scary Guitars, these are all original one-off art pieces and they're all done by you. Your hand is involved in this, and every piece is unique. Um, tell me about it. Uh, well, I was, well, just, just go back. How it started was I was actually uh, had some uh, back issues. I was in a wheelchair for a couple of months, and I started doing art pieces. And uh, I started applying what I was learning about doing these installations and, and canvases, where I was adding different elements like bones and things like that to the art pieces, to the canvases to the guitars themselves, and it started out doing really simple things, and I just kept evolving into what it is now, and it's continuing to evolve. And it was just fascinating, I love doing it, and, I've, and I'm not really a luthier by any standards, but I'm learning a lot from people that I know, friends of mine, uh, Tony here and I work together doing all the carving. I mean, it's, it's art, but it's functional art, kind of like a Ferrari, you know? Yeah, it's beautiful on the inside and the out. Yeah, and one of the things, I mean, you know, you, just your aura has always been that, you know, Mr. Scary, the bones, the skulls, the found objects, yeah, all like the... Evil, it's evil desert, you know, I mean, we've got a place out in Joshua Tree, and we mine the bones there, some of them, and uh, uh, we take a lot of inspiration from that. Um, like the snake hunter, which where I'm carving for a client, and uh, we've got the rattlesnake, he you know, head with the venom dripping from the fangs, and... and that, I mean, there's no mistake, that's a real rattlesnake, correct? Yeah, absolutely, and we, we get those out in the desert, and then we... We, we tan the hides and uh, blew it to the body. This is black limba, which is to me is the most beautiful tone wood, but it's very poisonous to work with. You can get mesothelioma if you don't wear a breather. That's why Gibson doesn't use it anymore, or very sparingly. And so, but it, to me, it's the best tone wood. It's a variation of mahogany. It's a form of mahogany, but it's a little brighter, um, but also has all that warmth and articulation. And I think actually it's a sort of a happy accident. What's happened with all this carving is it creates kind of. Um, Having, you know, it kind of breaks up the surface and it does something to the tone, I feel. Uh, because I played the guitars before they've been carved and then after they've been carved, we put them back together and there's definitely a distinct difference. Kind of like what happens in a room when you've got, you know, equally divisible surfaces, lengths of surfaces and 90 degree angles. You don't want that because you can, you know, they cancel each other out and get standing waves. This, there's so much randomness in there that I think that kind of, you kind of get the same effect with the surface of the guitar. Kind of like quasi chambering. Just, um, well, it's a louder guitar just acoustically, and usually, and it's a light guitar, so yes, resonation, but also, I think um, a lot of dynamics and a lot of just, um, just random frequencies colliding at the surface of the guitar that just are very friendly to harmonic distortion and, and, and just, you know, the friendliness of the tone. I mean, you know, I'm not a scientist, so I can't tell you the science behind it, but this is about vibe and... sound good, how about that? Yeah, well, I mean, at the end of the day, that's yeah, what's yeah. most important. I mean, you can talk about techy, specky, everything all day long, but at the end of the day, a dude wants to be able to pick something up, plug it in, and have it feel good and sound good. That's why sometimes I gotta talk people out of doing things that they wanna do, because at the end of the day, I go, if you really want that, you can have that, but you know what? If it were me, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do a tilt back headstock. I don't wanna increase the tension. I want a, a certain style neck, like the, the 79 Sandemus C neck, the boogie body thing, one inch all the way down, quarter sawn maple, you know, the 18 inch radius, we do stainless steel frets. We're starting to think about doing compensated frets. Um, the pickups, I, I wind by hand with Seymour. Uh, a lot of them on the scatter winder or the hand winder. It's a very loose, we've got all, uh, we bought a, a whole bunch of uh, old Gibson magnets that are naturally degaussed and the non-enamel wire. I do pickups where, I, I, I wind each pickup for that particular guitar. And if the customer's not happy, I'll rewind him another pickup until he is. So, if somebody liked the tone off of Back for the Attack, you could say, okay, I was using this guitar then, and they go out. Well, there's a lot, of, lot more elements involved than that, you know. I mean, all those records, I mean, recorded a certain way, and it's all sort of a big happy accident, and a lot of t investment in time and money, and sitting there, and, you know, mic placement, and, 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 you know, deciding which head to use in which room, and 
which, you know, how many mics and those other things I did on those records too that were kind of just very weird. Like I plug in an X15, a Fosix X15 four track cassette recorder on a side chain with an Echoplex and a G7 EQ. And I'd run that into the board on a fader too. That just kind of filled in all the gaps. There's all these things that, a lot more to do than just the guitar and the pickup, you know. I mean, yeah. there's a lot going on there, you know. Well, there you got it. Now now we got some of your secrets uh, along with the, the, the uh, guitar yeah, demo. That, trying to reproduce that. So George, I mean, the guitars are super sick. Um, I, 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 you know, I bow. Um, where do people go if they want to find out more? Um, we have a website. And it is? MrScaryGuitars.com. No period. It's MrScaryGuitars.com. Yeah, all, all one strand. Hey, there you have it. I'm Brett, hanging with George Lynch and Mr. Scary Guitars. If you want to check them out, hit his website up, MrScaryGuitars.com. You're watching PremierGuitar.com.